Hey guys, it's Slumming Rush. Today we're going to be doing a guide on Pilsen. So this is a map that people seem to struggle with a lot, and I understand why, but it's really not that complicated. So the way Pilsen works is you've got two viable flanks. You've got the heavy side, and you've got the medium side. Now, in a game like this, when there's no arty, I really like to play the medium side. I think it's very easy to play, but um, what you're going to find when you're in a medium tank on this map, obviously this is a heavy tank dominated map, uh, it's going to be very difficult for you to do anything aggressive, especially when there's TDs and, and things like, and auto loaders. So, um, my experience on this map is you have to play it very fluidly. You cannot go to a side and commit there often because what's going to happen is it's very easy just to get yoloed by a bat shot or a TVP, or if you poke the wrong corner, you'll get hit by a camping grill. Things like that happen all the time on this map. So what I'm doing here, you can see, uh, I'm going to pause it in a sec, but what's happening right here is I'm going to try to take this house. But very, very quickly, I realize, okay, they've got a bat shot who's in the city, but they also have a TVP. And I don't want to fight that TVP alone. And then if you look at my map behind me, we've got a tank that's faster than me sitting farther back than I am. So I've got a Sente X behind me. Um, and we've got the low, of course, and, but like he's a tier 8 tank. He's not going to be able to help me. So right now we've got this tier 10 medium who I expected to come help me, not helping me. He's just sitting at the back sniping. And so when I see that, I don't even play with teammates who do that. It's not worth the risk. They're not going to help you if they can't even you know, do anything semi-aggressive right at the beginning. So this is going to be a lesson for every single map in the game, but especially Pilsen, because if I were to try to play the house or to try to play it very aggressively, I mean, I would just get YOLO'd by uh, <laughs> autoloaders or something. And that tier 10 medium sitting behind me thinking he's a TD would, would just sort of watch me die. So this is a very important lesson. Now, my advice typically on basically every map is to play the side you think you can win. I don't think we can win the city, but I'm going there anyways. I don't really consider this game uh, close at this point because of the amount of map we've given up. I mean, we have an M103 who's YOLO'd the mid, <laughs> which accomplishes nothing. Um, and then based on our team and what they have in the city, I don't expect to win this city. So I'm here. I, the only reason I've come to this side is because I want to help out the T-34 who I invited to a platoon. And, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, I'd be camping in, in the field probably. But you're going to see this is going to be advantageous to me because I'm going to be able to fight the majority of the enemy team. And as a purple player, you know, I'm going to be able to impact the majority of the enemy team right here. So I'm able to do, I'll just spoil it or whatever. But from this position, because I've gone to where their whole team is, I'm going to be able to do 6k damage, which is three tier 10 tanks more or less. So what you can see me doing is I'm just fighting here. I expect to be shooting at a type four heavy, so I've loaded heat. And this is really not a fight that we want to be taking, but we're taking it anyways. And we're going to be very cautious about it. Now I'm being a bit more aggressive than I would have liked. I'm doing this because I had a platoon mate. You can see I'm just trying to keep him alive. Uh, and as they decide to YOLO my platoon mate, I'm able to get shot. So the defender sort of rushed out into the open. Um, and I'm shooting heat at his weak spots because it's a defender. You can see the bad shot decides he wants to sort of put shots into me. I notice the type force flanking my platoon mate. I don't see, like, I can't help him when there's an ISU in front of me. So this is just brawling right here. Now, I do want to point out there's a bad shot who's unspotted on the map. I expected him to maybe try to push up the one line, but you see I've got a scorpion watching that. So I, I can play here. It's just something I think about. When you're making plays like this, you want to look at the situation. Obviously, if the bad shot yielded me, I would have to do something. So... You can see there's a Lorraine who's going to do that. I move up. I haven't noticed him just yet. I notice him now. I put a shot into the Type 4 Heavy, hoping he'll fall back. The bat shot hasn't done anything. And here we are. We're just shooting at the Lorraine. So this position is working because I'm being aggressive. Like, for the most part, I've got the T-34 who's... I'm sort of baiting. I'm using him as... Uh, in a sense, he's basically bait, but not really. He's not taking hits, but they have to kill him to push through. So you're going to see, like, they all get stuck up on this 1T34 who's in effect keeping me alive just by being there so he eventually dies i don't see how i could have possibly saved him but his job of staying alive was just absolutely outstanding a lot of people will give up but there's huge power in delaying so you can see there's a type 4 heavy pushing into me i'm backing out this is how you have to play pilsen in a medium tank you're not going to be able to um 
out brawl heavy tanks but you can see what we're doing is we're just sort of taking advantage of the situation i'm trying to use my dpm to my advantage and i was just putting out as much damage as i possibly could now i noticed the bat shot was unspotted i was worried i was running into him you can see he's decided to start chasing me i get lucky there he bounces one of his shells we're just going to keep running away you'll notice i'm not going to stick around on a 5v1 i'm lucky to be able to run away but ultimately just trying to leave lets me be lucky here if i had just tried to stay and if i had tried to stay there and brawled out the bat shot there's no way i would have won so that's a mistake a lot of people would make uh it's generally really good to just try to do something if you don't see any other option uh because you know sometimes it, if you don't try nothing's gonna happen right the bat shot yolo's me i guess we track him and ram him well i ram him by tracking fuck <laughs> I track him by ramming him and you can see we're able to take him out of the fight next we have to deal with a type 4 an ISU and a t28 um, and their grills and stuff died so I push into this type 4 you can see he bounces a shell off me I just pushed right into him a lot of times if you rush people they'll get nervous and they'll mess up their shots right here as I'm pushing the type 4 I checked my map I can see the t28 and the is2 so you can see I'm trying to locate him on my screen right there I didn't really uh, make sense of where I saw the ISU on the map. You can see he was behind me, so I pushed forwards. This is going to prevent me from getting into a crossfire. Uh, what I'm doing here is I know... How do I... How do I control this? There we go. So I know that the T28's over here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a building between myself and him. This is city brawling in a medium tank. Obviously it's applicable on every single map, but what I'm doing is I'm pushing the alone TD. I wanna isolate someone so you can see the ISU is relatively alone. I sort of expect the T28 to be over here uh, and I'm gonna start side scraping the ISU. I'm doing this quickly because I know the T28 is gonna be coming up with him and you can see him. I saw him on the map there, but you can see him right in front of me. We low roll the ISU, I'm able, I'm able to finish him off before he reloads, obviously. And at this point in time, we've won the game, so I'm just gonna push into the T28, and uh, that's gonna be the win. So, this is my lesson on Pilsen. I really wouldn't suggest forcing yourself to play the zero line just because you're in a medium tank. There's a lot you can do on the map. You'll notice I waited for something to happen in when I wasn't uh, in control of the situation, so I was playing the J line. I wasn't pushing into their top tier heavy tanks because I couldn't have beaten them. But uh, when I saw the opportunity or when I, I basically ran away when I saw the opportunity, but that's my advice. You're going to have to play to what you're given on a lot of maps in this game. And uh, when you're in a medium tank like this, sometimes there's only so much you can do. So you have to wait for openings. And then when you see them, give them a try. And why did someone donate? I'm not even streaming. What the hell? I shouldn't be streaming right now. One sec. Okay, <laughs> so I don't know why I got the donation alert. No one donated to me while I wasn't streaming, but oh well. Basically, the way this map works and how every single map in the game works for medium tanks that aren't very armored, uh, obviously the super pushing doesn't count as a medium tank. You, you're going to want to try to play a side that works best for you, and if that isn't going to happen, like if you're up here and you're seeing you've got tanks sniping back here who are just going to let you die, uh, you're gonna want to find something else to do. Now, Something sometimes there isn't anything that you can do, right? Like if they had been here, I probably, I mean, I probably would have been pushing into them, but most most players, uh, including myself, would have, wouldn't have been very successful by pushing into heavies who were camping. The best thing I could have done right there was to have fallen back and just sort of waited for them. That's the way the game works. A lot of players like myself are super aggressive and they wanna be shooting and they wanna be doing damage all the time. And and sometimes you can't. So if if you're in if you're on this map in particular and you're here and you're noticing that you're alone and if you stay there you're just gonna die and your teammates are gonna farm, or even if you don't even have any teammates supporting you, a lot of the times your best bet is just gonna be to leave and find something uh, better that you can do because there's no way in hell that we would have won the zero line and I mean we didn't even, we ended up winning it eventually but only after I ran away like I would have died I don't understand I actually didn't watch how we won this side of the map I was so focused on this fight but the reality is I don't think I could have stayed there and secured us the game I think me deciding and seeing hey this isn't gonna work for me even though it worked for the teammates uh, deciding to go play something else and just winning that or doing extremely well on that side is generally my advice. So I know it's it's hard to replicate this type of game, but like the takeaway from this is going to be uh, look at your team, play to them because your teammates are never like how often do you see a 46 percent or say, oh, look, he's being aggressive. I'm, I'm going to go help him with my hit points. Most of the time they don't 
they aren't aware enough to realize that it's not that they're being malevolent you just have to play to your team because they're never going to play to you so that's that's my advice if you see something that doesn't look like it's going to work go try something out uh try something else and if that doesn't look 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 like it's going to work you're probably going to lose uh in this case i was able to win and obviously we we did a really good job stalling them but i would say that's an exception i'm i'm amazed that we ended up winning this game because somehow they ended up pushing this line i'll have to go back and check but um th this is how i get good map good games on this type of map is i look at things and i say okay this won't work let's try something else uh, and if that something else won't work, I say, okay, that won't work. Let's look for another opportunity. And sometimes there just isn't an opportunity, but the key isn't to try to force anything. It's not like I said, uh, I have to be a good player and out brawl everyone here. I, I looked for an opportunity where I could actually do that. And that was back here by using these held down areas or whatever and, and shooting people who were distracted. So that's medium tank gameplay in a nutshell. You're generally not going to be able to force anything. Uh, we can go look at the end plates from here though. I hope I'm not streaming. All right, so here are the end plates. Mastery badge, first class. I still have no clue what these medals are here. I really don't care. High caliber, top gun, 87K credits, 36 XP. That was the first game. I, I logged on today and said I have to make a YouTube video, and so I played the 62A, and there we go. It's Pilsen, 6,300 damage, six kills, 1,200 base XP, and we lost credits because I'm a heat spamming player that can't aim for weak spots on a type 4 heavy so thanks for watching guys i hope uh, this video is helpful as always if you have questions let me know down in the comments and i guess we can talk about one more thing in regards to heat don't people think that heat makes you a better player a lot of the times it's very easy to waste credits shooting heat you can see i did that on the defender and stuff if you're in a you want to carry enough to make sure you can use it if you need to now i know it's very easy for me to go through well not easy anymore it's it's okay i can deal with 20 heat a lot of times i'll go through all my apcr in games uh my advice if you're gonna be playing medium tanks or really any tank in this game especially with the new tanks like the type 4 heavy and, and just tanks that don't really have weak spots I would suggest carry enough that if you need it, you can use it. Don't go into this mindset saying you need to shoot heat all the time because you really don't need to shoot heat at tier 8 heavies like I did. But carry enough so that if you really want to, you could. And uh, that's that's just my advice. There's, there's no sense running all heat in any tank or all APCR. Um, but if, if, you're, if you're in the situation where you're in a medium tank and you have to go play the heavy tank side... I would suggest you carry enough heat to make sure you can actually do well there. Because a lot of the times, if you're just stuck with like AP in a tier 5 tank, and you've gone to the tier 7 heavy side, like in a tier 7 game, and you're stuck on this side of the map, and you're a tier 5, T34, I mean, you're not going to do well. So that's just some advice there. Uh, probably going to offend someone by saying that. But regardless, I hope this video is helpful. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the sci- uh, Fuck English. Bye. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. This is a map of the... Uh, fuck.